With more than 1,500 people dead in Gaza and hundreds of thousands displaced by the Israeli military's relentless bombardment of the Gaza Strip, global attention has focused on the Rafah border crossing with Egypt. The only viable way out of the densely populated enclave. But Cairo, wary of political fallout and security risks, is determined to prevent an exodus of refugees to Egypt, warning it could be a death knell for the Palestinian dream of statehood. The crossing point at Gaza's southern edge has been effectively closed since Tuesday, after Israeli airstrikes damaged infrastructure in the area. As the humanitarian crisis in Gaza grows more dire by the hour, there are intensifying calls for the opening of a humanitarian corridor to bring in desperately needed food, water, fuel and medical supplies. Israel's sudden evacuation order Friday for the more than one. One million residents of Gaza City has added to the pressure. In a statement Friday evening, Egypt's foreign ministry called the Israeli evacuation order a grave violation of the rules of international humanitarian law. Egypt is stockpiling aid sent by humanitarian organizations and Middle Eastern countries in northern Sinai, ready to be driven into Gaza should the Rafah crossing reopen. The country also launched a blood drive Thursday under orders from President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi. In a speech at a military academy on Thursday evening, Sisi said Egypt, long a key interlocutor between Israel and Palestinian factions, was ready to coordinate with all parties and keen to deliver humanitarian and medical aid to the Gaza Strip. Sisi and Egyptian Foreign Minister Sami Shoukri have engaged in a flurry of phone calls and meetings with governments around the world in recent days. But the question of whether to permit large numbers of Palestinians to exit Gaza to Egypt has revived a decades-old dilemma for Cairo. The government is concerned about security in the Sinai region and wants to avoid being seen as complicit in a campaign that could force Palestinians out of Gaza for good. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told Palestinians in Gaza to get out now on Saturday. As he vowed to avenge the shocking attack by Hamas militants inside Israel that killed at least 1,300 people. But for Gazans, who have lived for 16 years under a blockade maintained by Israel and Egypt, that is currently an impossible ask. Even in times of relative peace, Egypt maintains tight control of the border. Palestinians wishing to exit Gaza must obtain permission from both Palestinian and Egyptian authorities. Wait times are long, and getting access to a speedier route often requires paying a hefty fee to private travel agencies. Northern Sinai, where Egypt has battled Islamist militants for a decade, is heavily militarized. Egypt has taken in sizable numbers of refugees from other conflicts, including those displaced this year by the fighting in neighboring Sudan. But Sinai is more sensitive, and the Palestinian question is much more fraught. Unnamed Egyptian security sources told Sky News Arabia on Tuesday that there is a plan to liquidate Palestinian lands and force Palestinians to choose between death and displacement. It is far from clear that large numbers of Palestinians have any desire to flee their home for Egypt, despite the dangers. When we say that the border should be open for Gazans and give them the agency to leave, said Nancy O'Kill, an Egyptian analyst at the DC based Center for International Policy, in reality, that's not really a choice. When you're trapped between death and leaving, that's not giving people a choice, that's forcing people. The mass displacement of Palestinians during the founding of the State of Israel in 1948, an event Palestinians refer to as the Nakba. Catastrophe in Arabic remains a profound source of intergenerational trauma. Some 70% of Gazans are already refugees, 
having fled or been forced from their homes in parts of what is now Israel, and never allowed to return. We see these pro forma statements about a two-state solution, but I don't think the Zons can count on the idea that if they were forced to leave, that there would be much in the way of pressure to get them back," said H. A. Hellier, an analyst in the Middle East program at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. For Egypt, a massive influx of Palestinian refugees would pose significant political and security risks. Analysts said. Public opinion is deeply sympathetic to the Palestinian cause, an issue with the rare power to ignite public anger in an authoritarian country where meaningful protest is effectively outlawed. Talk of pushing Palestinians to Sinai as a more permanent solution is not acceptable, former Egyptian Foreign Minister Mohammed El Arabi, now chairman of the government-linked Egyptian Foreign Relations Council told the Washington Post. If you were to talk about this alternative home, this would be the end of the Palestinian question. Before the war, CC was already under significant domestic pressure. With the Egyptian economy in freefall and a presidential election scheduled for December, CC faces no real threat at the ballot box, but rumblings of dissent have grown louder in recent months. Politically, I don't think any Arab state wants to be seen as helping the displacement of the Palestinian population," said Timothy Kildas, deputy director of the DC-based Turia Institute for Middle East Policy. In public comments this week, CC has been careful to emphasize Egypt's support for a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and has called repeatedly for peace. On Thursday, he rejected relentless efforts by multiple parties to push a resolution to the Palestinian question that diverges from the 1993 Oslo Accords, the international agreements that were meant to pave the way for a Palestinian state. The Palestinian cause is the cause of all Arabs, and Palestinians should stay on their lands, he said. Egypt is trying to advance a prudent policy, Al Arabi, the former foreign minister, said. One oriented around organizing aid deliveries, taking in a smaller numbers of injured Palestinians for medical treatment and helping foreign nationals to leave Gaza. UNICEF The United Nations Children's Agency is operating under the assumption that there will be an opportunity, a humanitarian corridor, where the crossing will be open for supplies. Jeremy Hopkins, the agency's Egypt representative, told the Post Thursday. UNICEF is also working with the Egyptian Red Crescent to ready medical and other services in Egypt for groups of particularly vulnerable Palestinians who may be allowed to cross the border. They are talking about small numbers of people, thousands, but not hundreds of thousands, being allowed to cross the border to seek assistance, he said. Even if accepting large numbers of refugees was politically palatable. It would be logistically challenging to accommodate them in northern Sinai, humanitarian and rights groups say. The regional governor on Sunday directed local authorities to prepare for hosting displaced people by identifying schools, residential units and vacant lots that could be used as shelters. But the border region is ill-equipped to handle hundreds of thousands of refugees, according to Ahmed Salem, executive director of the Sinai Foundation for Human Rights, a UK-registered rights group with a team based in northern Sinai. During Egypt's decade-long fight against an Islamic state-linked insurgency in Sinai, dozens of local schools, facilities often used in crisis situations to house displaced people, have been destroyed or taken over by the military. And the main hospital in Orish has insufficient food, staff and medical supplies to handle a major influx of wounded people, Salem said. Security is also likely on the minds of Egyptian authorities, it would be difficult to prevent Hamas fighters from slipping into Egypt among groups of refugees. Kildas said, and Egypt might fear weapons 
would cross over and fuel militancy in Sinai. The Sinai Foundation for Human Rights recorded an uptick in Egyptian military patrols, troops and vehicles in the border region in recent days. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is scheduled to travel to Cairo on Sunday as part of a whirlwind tour to countries in the region aimed at containing the conflict. Egyptian officials will aim to convince American officials to push for a peace process. El Arabi said. Israel should restrain itself now, he said. This vicious circle of violence, it will not end the Palestinian question, it will not kill all the Palestinians. They will remain and they will resist.